Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to talk about how the C++ standard is developed. C++ ISO standard. All of the constructs, terminology, and definitions which comprise the C++ language are developed and documented according to a strictly defined set of rules. The process creating the current C++ standard and all future versions of the standard is regulated by the rules of the ISO organization. We are going to describe the overall structure and process for creating a new standard. As part of this talk, we will explain how the technical committees, subcommittees, working groups, and study groups work as a unit to produce documents which may be incorporated into a future version of the C++ standard. The term ISO is the abbreviated name for the International Organization for Standardization, with the headquarters located in Geneva, Switzerland. It is not really a company, but rather an international body or group. The idea of ISO is to establish agreed-upon documentation to support a particular industry or process. The letters ISO are not actually an acronym, since it would be spelled differently in the three official languages of the organization. In English, the acronym would actually be IOS, and in French, it would be OIN. There is folklore which explains that the members at the founding meeting selected the name ISO since the word ISOS in Greek means equal. ISO is the largest developer of international standards in the entire world. The role of ISO is only to produce international standards. It does not have any mechanism for enforcement. Some standards, like building codes, are enforced by local laws requiring conformance to an ISO standard. The standards produced by ISO span a wide range of subjects. Standards for manufactured goods cover things like standard heights for desks and office chairs. The healthcare standards include file formats for electronic medical records and medical billing. The C++ standard is simply a set of specification documents and there is no legal requirement for a developer to adhere to this standard. If your compiled code violates the standard, and the compiler is able to generate an error, you will need to resolve the issue. If your code has undefined behavior, which is a violation of the C++ standard, it is your responsibility to decide if this issue is worth addressing. ISO consists of about 300 technical committees. Each committee is responsible for creating documentation which defines a standard for some specific area, product, or technology. The standards are developed by the people that need them through a consensus process. Experts from all over the world develop whatever standards are required by their domain. As an example, there are ISO standards for bike helmets, medical devices, and date-time formats. ISO 8601 tackles the area of defining an internationally agreed-upon way to represent dates and times. If your business uses dates and times, you should do your best to conform to the existing ISO standard. Keep in mind, this particular standard would apply to anything which uses a date or time, and is not limited to computer software. For example, it might be used for a bank contract, television programming, or food labeling. There are also two joint committees, which report to both ISO and IEC, which is the International Electrotechnical Commission. The joint committees are called JTC1 and JTC2, where the J stands for joint. JTC1 is in charge of electronic standards, while JTC2 deals with renewable energy. Before JTC1 was formed, ISO Technical Committee No. 97 existed to handle anything related to information processing systems. In 1987, 
Committee 97 was merged with the IEC Technical Committee No. 83 to form JTC-1. This is now the Joint Technical Committee which deals with all electronic-related technologies. JTC-1 governs the standards for all kinds of technology, including computers and software languages. There are numerous subcommittees in JTC-1, such as Subcommittee 6, which handles telecommunications, and Subcommittee 42 for artificial intelligence. Each subcommittee can set up multiple working groups to address a particular standard. A working group can set up various study groups to refine some particular aspect of their standard. Most programming languages are part of Subcommittee 22. This subcommittee designated a working group called WG21 for the sole purpose of developing the C++ standard. There are currently 22 computer languages which have a ratified or published ISO standard. This list contains some of the more widely known computer languages which have an ISO approved standard. Most of these standards are produced by SC22, while the SQL standard is maintained in SC32. Several common languages like Java, Go, Rust, Python, Perl, PHP, D, and Objective-C do not have a published ISO standard. Having an approved ISO standard does not necessarily make a computer language better. There are some developers who will say obtaining the approval of ISO can slow down the development of a language, and this may be accurate. However, without an approved standard, compiler designers can choose which parts of the language to implement, and porting from one compiler to another may produce inconsistent results. Some languages like Java and D do have a formal specification document which is produced by the designer, but it is not an international standard. Other languages, like Objective-C, have no formal definition and are implemented by a single vendor with no outside input. The primary focus of Working Group 21 is to produce an international standard that describes and defines the C++ language. Most of the work this group does involves the task of developing a working draft document, which can be proposed as a new international standard. ISO has six different types of deliverables, which any working group could potentially produce. Only the first three, the IS, TS, and TR, are relevant to WG21. The IS, or International Standard, is the most common document C++ developers refer to when programming. When someone mentions the C++ standard, what they are actually referring to is an approved IS document. Since C++ 20 has not been approved as of yet, it is not an official international standard. There is currently a working draft, but until it has been approved by ISO, the contents are subject to change. The international standard is formally called ISO slash IEC 14882 and was last updated and approved in 2017. A second international standard existed, which defined mathematical special functions. This IS is now obsolete, since the content was merged into the main C++ IS. An international standard is a formal document approved by the ISO member nations. Each member nation is represented by one particular entity called a national body. For the United States, the national body is ANSI, the American National Standards Institute. The UK counterpart is the BSI, or British Standards Institution, and Germany is represented by a body called DIN, the Deutsches Institut für Normung. 
There are currently a total of 164 member nations, each with its own corresponding national body. Each member nation gets one vote in the standard approval process, regardless of the size of the country or the number of members. Each national body sets its own procedures for voting. For example, in the United States, all members of ANSI may comment or vote on any proposed ISO standard. There is a group within ANSI which collates all the comments and produces one overall vote for the ISO ballot. Approving an IS involves the most rigorous voting process and can take several months or sometimes even years after the draft is proposed. The second type of document used in the C++ standard is called a Technical Specification, or TS. Publishing a TS can serve several different purposes. The most common use of a TS is to describe a modification to the C++ standard. These changes can be marked as experimental, so compiler designers can try out an implementation and see what happens and if it works. If the committee believes there is agreement, the TS is merged with the current working draft for the next IS, or potentially promoted to a standalone IS. Since a TS is not intended to be a permanent document, if the changes are deemed to be faulty or agreements cannot be reached, the TS is reworked or dropped. Listed here is a few of the technical specification documents Working Group 21 has produced. The first part of the TS number is a serial number, and the second part indicates when the TS was originally published. There can be multiple TS documents produced by a single study group. For example, SG-1 produced TS documents for concurrency, parallelism, and coroutines. The concurrency TS is expected to be merged into C++20. Looking at a few sources, we were able to confirm the 2015 TS for parallelism was merged into C++17. However, there is a revised TS for Parallelism 2, which was published in 2018 and is still underway. According to CPP reference, the TS for Coroutines was published in 2017 and updated towards the end of 2018, with no actual indication of the current status. Several other reliable sources do indicate that coroutines are set to be part of C++20. It is important to remember that until a new IS has been approved by ISO, there is no definitive way to know exactly what will be in the new version of the C++ language. Nothing is guaranteed and anything can change until the voting process for the updated international standard is complete. The third type of document which Working Group 21 can produce is a technical report. The purpose of a TR is not well defined by ISO, and there has actually only been one official TR for C++. A second TR was started, and then ISO changed some of the procedures, and TR2 was split into multiple technical specifications. A TR is the easiest kind of document to publish. While there are 164 member nations, not all of them participate in SC22. Oddly, there are currently 22 nations which vote in SC22. To be approved, a TR only requires a majority of the participating SC22 member nations. For a TS, the margin required rises from a single majority to a two-thirds majority. The process is even more involved to approve an IS. 
the first step requires that two-thirds of the SC-22 participating members agree with the proposal in order to even send the draft to ISO. Then, 75% of the 164 member nations must accept the proposal before it is considered approved. This is why it can take six months to a year from the time WG21 agrees on a draft to the point where we have a new official C++ standard. This outline shows the basic workflow for creating a new C++ standard, which begins as a series of proposals. Each proposal is examined in either the Evolution Working Group or the Library Evolution Working Group. Occasionally, a new proposal is reviewed in both working groups. The design phase has three possible outcomes. The proposal can be accepted for wording, rejected, or sent to a study group for further design work. It is very common for a proposal to spend several months or even years in the design phase. The head of the working group, which is an elected position, can create a smaller subgroup to research and focus on a specific area. This subgroup is called a study group. Typically, a study group is assembled when there are multiple proposals which conflict, or one proposal exists which is inadequate or incomplete. The goal of an SG is to create a proposal suitable for consideration by the whole WG. The working group will then decide whether to accept the revised proposal or send it back to the study group. Once a proposal has been accepted, it is sent to the appropriate wording group. This group reviews and cleans up the specific phrasing in the proposal and may need to clean up conflicts. When the wording group agrees on the proposal, it is finally ready to be included in the current working draft and must be approved by the full committee. Once the full committee agrees upon the working draft, which will contain multiple proposals, it is sent to ISO. The member nations can make comments on any proposal, and these comments may take a few months to be collated and sent back to the WG21 committee. The next step is for the design and wording groups to resolve any comments and send each change back to WG21 for integration into a new working draft. Eventually, a working draft is approved by enough of the 164 member nations, and a new ISO C++ international standard is published. Since this is a very lengthy process, it helps to explain why C++11 took so long to be approved. There were numerous proposals, and many of them were massive. C++98 was around 400 pages, and C++11 had around 1,200 pages. The number of comments and the back and forth to correct all of the issues just took a lot of time. To improve this process, WG21 decided to add fewer proposals to each new IS and send a draft to ISO every three years. Sometimes this means a proposal is pushed out a few years, while other features which are ready for the draft will be available sooner. Project management is easier when there is a consistent release schedule for a new C++ standard. For more information about CopperSpice, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.